Now, I'm not going to go into the why of the math that we're going to use here to calculate consistency. Um, I may mention a couple of things that help us understand what's going on a little bit better, but the math is somewhat complicated, um, and so I'm just I'm going to ask you to trust me uh, as I am trusting uh, Dr. Sylvia. Um, I may at a later date, as I dig into it more, do a short video on why, but that's probably beyond the scope of what I want to do here. So, first thing we want to do for each of these comparisons is just add up the values on each row. So we'll just go ahead and do the sum here, and we'll drag it over. And I'm just going to do this for one uh, comparison. I'll do it off the video for the other ones, and we'll then we'll come back and do the next step in the process. So over here, we want to normalize the the values that we've calculated. So to normalize them, we just take the value and divide it by the total. And we're going to hit F4 to hold that there. And actually I want to just use these as just numbers. So just drag that down. And then the total down here should always equal 1. So it's a nice little check just to make sure we've done it right and it looks like we have. So um, I'm going to rem actually remove the thing, the um, absolute reference on the column so we can drag it over. And yeah, we can just drag that over. And we'll just drag it over to there. Is that let's just double check, make sure that's um, actually doing what we expect it to do. Yeah, and we'll just drag this over as well. And then we want to take the row average, and that's pretty simple here. Just select those, average them out, and copy that down. And again, so you can just copy this. Okay, and then we want to calculate the consistency and for each one of these. And so all of that is is using the mmult um, formula. And we'll take this row and do this column. And what that's doing is it's taking each value um, in the first value here and the first value here, multiplying them together, and then adding the next value times the next value plus the next value times the next value. Uh, this is similar to the sum product formula we used earlier, but um, for a row and then a column. And then we're just going to, oh, I just lost that. Let's reselect that. And we're just going to then divide by the average. And when we're consistent, we're going to be pretty close to the number of comparisons that we have. Um, so it looks like we're probably going to be pretty good here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and fix the column and the row on this portion over here, the, the averages, and then when we copy down, these rows will just move down, but this will stay consistent. So let's just do that real quick, copy those down, and get the total. So that's a total of nine, and let's just make sure that that worked, and it did. Okay, so then we're just going to put in the number of comparisons over here. And the average consistency is just the total, the definition of an average, divided by the number of comparisons. 
And then there's a specific formula for the consistency index. I'm just going to cheat here and look over. Here we have P3 minus so this value. If we look at this, we're actually taking the, um, the average consistency minus the number of comparisons divided by the number of comparisons minus 1. So we'll just go back here. And this is just a formula that they've proven uh, is actually the case. So the average consistency, or sorry, let's just double check that. That was the, yes, the average consistency minus the number of comparisons. So that's equal to the average consistency minus the number of comparisons and divided by the number of comparisons minus one. And then we're going to come over here and if we're consistent, um, it, so given given the number of comparisons, we've there they the researchers have gone ahead and inserted random numbers into tables like this, but keeping the properties that we have here of the ones down in the middle and then the reciprocal at the diagonals. And they've found the, um, I believe it's the average of the random values. I'll have to check on that. Um, but then what we do is we come over here and we're just going to use the values they've calculated. So if we just say, um, let's just do a VLOOKUP and we're going to look up the number of comparisons. And sorry, the VLOOKUP, it prefers it in the opposite order here. So I'm just going to move this over here. So we'll come back here. So if you look up, we're going to look up this value in this array, uh, this table, and we're going to use the second index. And I think that's the right. I don't remember if this is zero index base. We'll find out in a moment. No, that was exactly what we wanted. So again, that's taking this number up here and looking in this table, it goes down through here, finds the first value that matches this value, and then takes the um, second column, the value in the second column. So that's what's going on there, so that's 0.58. So then we're just going to calculate the consistency here, which we'll look again, that's just the um, consistency index divided by the random index. And so if we do this, consistency index divided by the random index. Now all that's saying is um, the closer this consistency index is to the random index, that indicates that the answers were closer to a random um, assignment of the preferences. And the closer that they are to a random assignment of preferences, the more the less trustworthy the preferences are. Um, so the uh, in the theory they've just decided that at about a 10% um, level, anything below a 10% level is consistent. So to calculate that, we'll just use this formula. We're just going to say if this value here is less than 0.1, then it's consistent, otherwise it's not. So if this value here, oh, let's say if this value is less than 0 0.1, 0.1, then we'll put yes in this cell, otherwise we'll put no, and yes, we're consistent. So that is a quick overview of how to calculate consistency.